Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for December the 13th of 2020. Well, it is titled Geminid Meteors over Xinglong Observatory. So what do we see here? Well, we see the observatory in the foreground and up in the sky, we see stars plus a large number of meteor streaks crossing the sky. So as we see those, if you notice the meteors, they all seem to go back towards one constellation. And that is the constellation of Gemini. And you can see the twin stars of Castor and Pollux towards the far left of this screen. Now, if you have trouble identifying uh, Gemini, we can annotate this and bring some labels to it. And you can see Gemini there off to the left and the bright constellation of Orion towards the right with the bright star Betelgeuse, the reddish glow uh, towards the center of the image here. And that locates it if we see the uh, meteor streaks, if you trace them all backwards, imagine connecting them with the straight lines going back, you'll see they all seem to come from one point in Gemini. That is what we call the radiant point of a meteor shower. And it is the point from which all meteors appear to radiate from that given meteor shower. Now, that is only an optical illusion. They're really not coming from the same location in space. It is that all of the meteors follow the same orbit. So they are debris left over by an object traveling through the solar system. So they follow essentially the same orbit and are all traveling the same path. And they will appear to converge off in the distance, much as distant railroad tracks or telephone poles will appear to converge off in the distance. If you look at them down a long straight road, the same thing happens here. So they're really not converging together. It simply tells us they are all moving parallel to each other. Now, when we see these, we are looking, they are actually are associated with an object. And in this case, it's interesting that they are associated with an asteroid, the asteroid 3200 Phaethon, which is an asteroid. Now, most meteor showers are associated with comets. Comets are balls of ice, and most of the material is very loosely held and very easy to disassociate from the comet and therefore just continues to follow the comet's path around the sun. When the Earth goes through the path of that material, then we pick up the meteors, they strike the Earth's atmosphere and vaporize, giving us the trails that we see here today. Now, what is the case with the asteroid here, there must be some way that it has lost material in the past, whether through various collisions or other effects that have occurred that have it allowed it to lose material like this that now the Earth is picking up. But it's a little more unusual that it is an asteroid instead of a comet that causes this. Now, along with the meteors, we see one very bright meteor, which is what we call a fireball down towards the lower right hand side there. And in fact, just above and slightly to the right of the star Sirius, the brightest star other than, of course, our own sun in the sky. Now a fireball just means it's a larger piece of material instead of a small bit of dust or grain of sand, which is many of the small meteor flashes that we see there. This is a little bit larger object and therefore gives a longer and brighter trail that we see in the sky here. And that would be an example of a fireball. So here we see the Geminids from 2015, five years ago. And if you're looking for Geminids and have clear skies tonight, this is the best night to be able to see them and should be an unusually good apparition of this meteor shower because we will not have a moon to interfere. The moon is very close to new phase, so it will not be around to brighten the sky. A brighter moon makes it harder to see many of the faint meteors that would be here, although larger things like the fireball and the brighter meteors that we see in this image would still definitely be visible.
I should also note that this is taken over an extended period of time over the course of the night. You ne never see this many meteors all at once. And you'd have to take this for probably an hour or two, a couple of hours to be able to see them. You might in a really good meteor shower get one or two meteors a minute. But it takes a long time to be able to pick up this many meteors. So that was our picture of the day for December the 13th of 2020. It was titled Geminid Meteors over Jinglong Observatory. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture previewed to be human made meteor. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day everyone. And I will see you in class.